Civil Engineering Academy, helping you in your journey to pass the PE. All right, welcome to Civil Engineering Academy. Today we're solving a problem from Geotech. The problem states a square footing is embedded four feet in a sand layer shown. Given the properties shown below, find the minimum footing size required. So these are uh, answers in feet. Of course, it's a square footing, so it'd be five by five or whatever. Um, we have a 200 kip load on the footing. It's in sand. The depth of that footing is four feet. Depth to groundwater is 10 feet. And I can tell right off the bat that's meant to mess you up. Uh, if the water table was uh, above you know, the footing, then we'd have to use other equations. But um, the thing to look at is uh, the depth of the footing and the depth of the groundwater table. The depth of the groundwater table is much greater than the depth of the footing, so we don't really have to worry about it. We we're given a factor of safety against bearing of 3. Uh, the unit weight of soil is 125 PCF, and the internal friction angle is 32 degrees, and then they give you gamma of uh, concrete, unit weight concrete of 145. So uh, if you're using the Civil Engineering Reference Manual, I'll be pulling uh, equations from Chapter 36. And I will be using the general bearing equation for this uh, problem, which is equation 36.1b, which states that Q ultimate, the ultimate bearing capacity is 1 half gamma B, and gamma, so that's the unit weight of the soil. B is your width of footing. This is a, a factor we have to look at for um, the internal friction angle it's associated with. Plus C and C, same thing. Plus PQ, which is a surcharge if applied, which we don't have. Plus gamma DF, which is depth of footing times NQ, another factor. So N gamma, NC, NQ all have to do with the friction angle. We're going to look that up right now. So uh, for 32 degrees, we go to table, table 36.2, and 32 degrees is between the 30 and 34. So I'm just going to take the average value between those two. So for NC, I got 44.9. And Q, I get 29.5. And N gamma, I got 27. Point, whoops, 27.35. Okay, so those are those that we need. We also need to use shape factors. In the paragraph underneath the equation, it says that each one of these is multiplied by a shape factor. Uh, well, not each one. The NC and the N gamma term are multiplied by a shape factor found in table 36.4 and 36.6. Or 36 or 0.5, sorry. And because it's a square footing, NC would be 1.25. And N gamma, which I'm going to write down, N gamma for square is 0 0.85. I didn't write down NC because this is this doesn't have cohesion, so this whole term goes to zero. We're dealing with the sand. We also have don't that we don't have the surcharge load, so that's zero. All right, so we have what we need to write this out. So Q ultimate equals hat one half times one twenty five times B. We don't know, and gamma is zero point eight five plus zero plus one twenty five times depth was four. NQ is 29.5. So Q ultimate equals, I got 1452.97B plus 14750. All right, so we have one equation. We have this Q ultimate to find the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil. We were given a factor of safety, and with that, we can solve for, uh, get a second equation, and then solve for our dimensions for the footing. So, um, there's an equation 
36.4 that says that QA equals Q net over F. Other books will list this as Q allowable is Q ultimate over the factor of safety. I like this better. Um, so the allowable is equal to the ultimate, which we just solved up here, divided by 3. So what's 1452.97b divided by 3 plus 14750 divided by 3. That equals 484.32b plus 4916.7. And that has to equal the allowable. And the allowable is something you're just going to have to think about. The allowable is basically your 200 kip load distributed over uh, the dimensions of the footing. So it's going to be 200 or 2,000 pounds, 200,000 pounds divided by B squared. Okay, that's what's going to be applied. And you also have to add the soil, depth of the soil on that foundation. So it's 4 feet times its unit weight. Okay? So now we have these two equal to each other. You could try to solve for B, but you would have a B cubed. That's not something that would be friendly to solve on the PE. So what I'm going to do is keep these as uh, two separate equations and go straight to the answers and start plugging them in and find out um, which answer gives me the closest value to each other. It's not going to be exact, um, but we're going to find out. So first thing I'm going to try is 5. And I'll just draw a little chart here. So this represents the left side of the equation, this side, and the right side will represent this side. Okay, so plug in 5 on, on the left side, I got 8,500. On the right side, I got 73.38. Okay, there's a dip, big difference there. If I try five and a half, five and a half, I got 7.112, and on the right side, I got 75.81. That's close. That's closer. And if we try six, it's going to be 60. 56 on the left, and on the right I got 78.23. Okay, that's starting to get farther apart. So I can tell right off the bat that this, this is going to be my closest answer because these values are the closest to each other. Now I went ahead and solved this, and if you get the actual answer for B, I get a dimension of 5.34. So um, the actual minimum that's required is going to be slightly bigger than that so the answer is going to be 5.5 answer is B so I know this was a longer problem hopefully you can work through this and get familiarized with it definitely get to know this general equation for the ultimate bearing capacity books have um, simplified problems whether you're dealing with a square foundation a circular foundation or a continuous footing, you know, a long strip footing. And those are, are good to know as well. You'll want to write them in the book. So um, anyway, get familiar with this. Also get familiar with where the water table is as well because that can really change the equations that you're using depending on where that water table was. If it was up in this area, up in here above the footing, then we'd have to use a different different equation for the ultimate bearing capacity. But because it was um, a lot lower over, twi over twice the depth, then we didn't have to worry about it. But anyway, I hope that helped. Head to civilengineeringcanada.com for more tips and tricks related to the PE exam. Thanks, bye.